Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Today I'm going to start talking about econometrics and do a real quick stats review for you just to make sure that you're up to speed before you get into that econometrics class. And I'm going to cover four basic things in this video. The timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. So just to remind you of some super basic statistics, I have a super basic example. So I've got five different people here. They're all five feet, five inches tall. Maybe we're trying to think about some variables about their height. So I can think about a mean. So I've got a mean of five foot five inches. There's no variation in my data. And if I have no variation, that means I have a zero for my variance. Talk about the formula for variance in a second. If I take the square root of variance, that's gonna tell me my standard deviation. My standard deviation here is zero. And just for fun, this means that my n or my number of observations is gonna be equal to five. Now suppose I've got a slightly different example. And of course, I'm gonna use cats in my example because why not? So I've got six different cats here. And maybe I'm gonna say that this is the number of cats that live on my block. So I've got these six cats. I'm gonna label them WM, WS, WG, all the way to WG. And so what this means is I've got six different cats all with different weights. So if I wanna find the mean or the average of those weights, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add up all their weights divided by the number of cats. I've got six cats, so I'm gonna divide it by six. Now another way that you're commonly gonna see summations in this class is with sigma notation, which is just this guy right here. All that means is I can rewrite this numerator part of my equation right here. If I don't want to write it out, I can do the sum from m to g, or from Milo to giggles, of their weights. I'm going to divide it by 6 to the number of cats that I have, and that's going to give me my mean, which is going to be 10. If I want to keep going, again, I'm going to use that sigma notation because you're going to see that a lot. For variance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the difference between the weight of each cat and the average weight for all the cats. I'm going to square that, and I'm going to divide that by the number of cats that I have. And so what you're going to see is that since the mean is 10, the difference from Milo, Sasha, George, and Tootsie, they have no difference, so that's going to be zero. I have a five pound deviation for Bear and a five pound deviation for Giggles. So I'm going to have a five right here, and I'm going to square that to get 25. So I have 25 plus 25, which is going to give me 50 divided by six. And I'm just going to keep that as 50 over six, so that's sort of a complex fraction. Standard deviation, just going to take the square root of variance and I'm going to get this guy right here. Now what I just did is assuming that that was a population of cats, but maybe more realistically, there's probably more than those six cats that live on my block or in my neighborhood, so maybe this is just the sample of cats that I have, and I'm trying to use that sample to approximate what I think the population mean is going to be. So what I can do here is now my sample mean is going to be exactly the same as it was before. For my variance, because I don't have the overall population, because I just have this sample, Rather than divide it by 1 over n, I'm going to divide it by 1 over n minus 1, and 6 minus 1 is 5, which is why you see the 5 right here. The standard deviation is going to stay exactly the same, and that's just going to be the square root of the variance, which in this case is the square root of 10. Just to remind you that a big part of econometrics is going to be hypothesis testing. So if you've seen hypothesis testing before, remember we have a null and alternative hypothesis. We're trying to either reject or not reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. So just one example that I have for right now is maybe Bill says that all basketball players are at least six feet tall or over six feet tall. Well, that's his null hypothesis. An alternative hypothesis could be something like all basketball players are not over six feet tall. We have a ton of different ways to test that. There's gonna be a whole separate video on hypothesis testing. So if there's specifically something in that video you want me to cover, make sure to put that in the comment section below. The last thing I'm gonna talk about for sort of the stats review is how we relate two variables to each other. So two variables A and B, we're asking how they're related. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about, well, do they move in the same direction or do they move in opposite directions? If they move in the same direction, we're gonna say that they're positively correlated. And so what we're gonna say is that their rho or their correlation coefficient is greater than zero. If they move in opposite directions, if when A goes up, B goes down, for example, we're gonna say they have a negative correlation. And just to remind you that rho is always less than or equal to one, so we have that the absolute value of rho is less than or equal to one, or negative one is less than or equal to rho is less than or equal to one. How do I find this correlation coefficient? Well, first what I need to do is I need to find the covariance. And again, it's gonna be divided by n if it's a population or n minus one if it's a sample. And all we're gonna do is for every observation from observation one to observation n, for values a and b or variables a and b, we're just gonna say, what is your value of A minus A bar, or the mean of A, times the value of B minus the mean of B. 
and we're going to divide that by n. That's going to give us our covariance. And to get correlation, we're just going to take that covariance, and we're going to divide it by the standard deviation of a times the standard deviation of b, where again, standard deviations are just the square root of variance. So again, super quick stats review, super quick review on sigma notation. If this video or these videos in general are helping you out, please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time for another case of econ struggles.